Barrett's esophagus is a type of cell that people get in their esophagus or food tube. And it occurs because people have reflux. They have acid coming up in their chest. The good news about the Barrett's esophagus cells is that they're a little bit more resistant to acid. So they fight acid a little better, which is probably why we make this change. The bad news is that in a small proportion of people that get this Barrett's esophagus, they can actually move on to get cancer. It's a precancerous condition. And that's what we're worried about. The surgery we have, unfortunately, is a pretty tough surgery to go through. It's called esophagectomy, and they remove your esophagus, usually from here to here, and pull your stomach up into your chest. So it's kind of a bit of a difficult thing to go through because many of these patients are elderly. They don't, they don't tolerate it particularly well, and there's a lot of complications with it. Now this balloon is coated on the outside with essentially what are metal coils. And these metal coils get off, give off these radio frequency waves, which are kind of high power waves which cause tissue damage by an effect essentially like burning. So the deflated balloon goes up, the sides of the balloon touch the area we don't want, we run power through the balloon, and because we know how much power goes through for how long, we get a reliable amount of tissue damage, which is what we want, it's essentially controlled tissue damage and the cells die, burning away unwanted tissue. That's the bottom line, and not giving it the chance to go on to get to cancer. The problem with this cancer is that if you do get to can this cancer, um, it's a highly lethal cancer. So we really want to stop it before you get to the cancer part because the five-year survival for that cancer is 15%. This is going to change the way that we treat these patients. Here we have a less invasive measure that leaves the food tube in place so that people don't have to change the way they eat that avoids all the problems that we can get with that heavy duty surgery. So at least from the data we have so far, it looks like a win-win and this in a lot of centers in the country now is becoming an exciting new way to, to move with these patients so that we can avoid that big hit that they would otherwise take. We've demonstrated that we can change the cells back to normal. We've demonstrated that in the short term we can decrease progression and cancer risks. Um, is this going to hold up at five and ten years? If you're a 45-year-old person and you come into me, is, is this the right answer for you if I, if I think you're going to live another 40 years? Well, we won't have our hands around that for a while yet, but we're amassing data now and trying to get um, information about what the long-term outcomes are with this procedure and are they going to be as good and as durable as a successful surgery. Waiting around for people to go bad so that we can try to rescue them is just an unhappy thing. It's like parking an ambulance on a corner and waiting for a car wreck to occur. And because so few people, people get this cancer, the corner is not even all that busy, but when it happens, the wreck is catastrophic. So what we're doing instead of parking the ambulance is trying to make an intervention so that the ambulance doesn't have to come.